there you see 229 yay, 181 nay. The House that should voting be enough on that to measure. Do it. I think so. That would end that the government shutdown. While you were sleeping, the government shut down, folks. And now it looks like the House is trying to uh, rectify that. Look, this all, all this started at midnight, the debate, and now the voting. A couple hours ago, the Senate voted to pass a two year spending bill. So, how, how this vote will turn out remains the open question. You know, Democrats have been have been hoping to use their leverage to force action on their priorities. Uh, Rand Paul's problem was that there's Demo the Republican Party is is hypocritical by spending money it doesn't have and adding to deficits. Let's bring in CNN's Phil Mattingly. So what does it look like to you? I see 234. Yeah, Christine, I want to lay out what just happened. It was a very dramatic scene. Basically, we knew when the vote was called that things were a little bit dicey. Nobody has had a great sense of where House Democrats were over the course of the last 12, 16, I guess we're at 24 hours now since this day, really kicked into high gear. What happened when they started the vote is Republican votes started pouring in. Democrats, almost all of them, sat in their seats, did not vote, and stared at the voting screen. What they were doing is essentially daring Republicans, seeing how many votes Republicans could actually put up, how many yes votes they could put up. Guys, they knew, and Republicans knew, Democrats were going to be needed to come over at some point. The question was, how many, and perhaps maybe a little bit of, how much can you sweat over the course of the next 15 minutes of this vote? That standoff occurred for more than 10 or 11 minutes, with both sides either staring at one another or staring at the vote screen that shows how every single member has voted. At that point, members started giving the signal that it was time for the votes to come in. At first, it was a Democrat signaling a thumbs down, meaning perhaps the votes were going to go against Republicans on this issue. And then all the Republicans started coming in, the remaining Republicans that had been holding out, and the Democrats soon followed. They have the votes. They clearly are going to pass this bill. The shutdown is going to come to an end. The potential crises of spending crises, of debt ceiling crises that it seems like we've been dealing with on a self-imposed basis year after year, week after week, month after month, those will be pushed aside as well. But I, I just want to underscore, that was not a normal vote. That was very tense. That was quite a standoff. And while they got it over the finish line by the end of it, there were a couple minutes there where I think a lot of people were a little bit worried about where that one was going to head. I think you're right. Democrats really wanted Republicans There's to again. sweat because we were watching a, a vote that didn't look like it was going to go their way. They just gaveled. OK, so it looks like this thing has passed the House. So, Phil, now uh, the president will sign this bill, presumably. And when will the government reopen? Well, I think the big question right now is what was the actual impact of a shutdown, particularly one that's in the middle, right, of, the this, right. that, that, that's in the middle of the night. And another thing, when the Office of Management and Buzz Budget was reaching out to the agencies last night and informing them that they needed to prepare for this, they were allowed contingency plans to mm -hmm. allow their workers, even those that would be furloughed, to come in for four hours to have kind of an, a regular order shutdown, if you will, if that's something that actually exists. <laughs> Although, based, based on the last 18 days, apparently it is a regular thing. Um, so there is an expected to be a lot of impact. I haven't heard from, from friends and colleagues that are federal workers that any furlough notices have gone out, so things should be pretty seamless. Um, this was a short shutdown. Yeah. It, what, a, what amazing thing. And I, I, I want to underscore real quick the importance of what this deal actually does going forward. These types of moments, presumably, will now be off the table. This is, keeps the government open until March 23rd, but setting the top line spending numbers, increasing the budget caps, $300 billion over the course of two years, plus another $100 billion in disaster relief, that really takes out a lot of almost the tools that led to these types of moments in the past should smooth things out at least for the next couple of months probably a year or two that i think for people who are tired of crises is a positive thing yep and we know now it is officially passed we saw the the gavel that's the word from the house floor let's listen a little bit to senator Rand paul i mean this all was you know sort of pushed into motion by Rand paul who has completely uh, you know philosophical differences completely with this listen Drawing attention to how much debt we're accumulating is something that is important. We've waited all week long to put this at the very end of the week and let it expire towards the end as people get tired. And then everybody says, well, you don't want to shut down government, do you? And I really don't. My intention has never been to shut down government. But my intention is also not to keep it open and borrowing a million dollars a minute. And my intention is not to vote for bills that say, oh, it's just keeping it open but bills that actually spend so much money that I think they endanger our security. If I'm not mistaken, this bill automatically raises the debt ceiling, so it takes the heat off yep. them to have to account for all of that government spending for the next couple of years. He said earlier in the night, if you were against Obama deficits and now you're for the GOP deficit, isn't that the very definition of hypocrisy? Ouch. 
Yeah, look, and I think you've heard that from a lot of people right now. If you were paying any attention to the fiscal battles of the eight years prior to President Trump taking office, and they were painful, and they were lengthy, and they were all about reducing deficits, they were all about cutting spending, and now you have a bill that gets large bipartisan majorities supporting it that has $300 billion in spending increases. It does completely away with the sequester. It does completely away with the 2011 budget caps. I think the senator makes a point that is resonates with even those who have supported this deal. I think the interesting element here, and, and I, guys, I want to point out that we knew the House was going to be an issue and that it was yeah. going to be a little bit of drama over here. We woke up Thursday morning now with no idea the Senate was going to be a problem. We knew they had the votes in the Senate and that was going to move forward. They expected to move forward in early afternoon. Obviously, we know what happened. Senator Paul was not willing to give consent because yeah. he could not get an amendment vote, and they ended up pushing it to the shutdown. But I think the important component here is why were Republicans willing to go for this? It's the defense spending. There's no yeah. question about it. $163 billion over two years addressing a lot of the shortcomings that people like Defense Secretary James Mattis, who's a very powerful voice on Capitol Hill when he comes up here, have been asking for, begging for pleading for that won the day and that's why they got this over the finish line guys Phil we were led to believe though that Nancy Pelosi was gonna hold her members out without some sort of guarantee on immigration similar to what Mitch McConnell uh, did over there in the Senate for Chuck Schumer did they get any guarantee on bringing legislation to the House floor they did not. And I think if you if you watch the Democratic caucus, House Democratic caucus over the course of the last day and a half, if you've been speaking to members and aides as I have behind closed doors over the course of that same period, you recognize the incredibly difficult and very thin line Democratic leadership was trying to walk on this. Look, the, their kind of position on DACA is not a secret. They very clearly wanted something out of this. They wanted, basically they wanted Speaker Paul Ryan to remove the forward clause at the end of his commitment to take this up, and that is that the president has to support the bill. Yeah. He was not going to do that. He was never going to do that. So what you saw is publicly Democrats saying that they were going to hold out their votes. What you heard privately is the leader who I would note, her staff was an integral part of negotiating this budget deal. They pushed for a lot of priorities. They got a lot of priorities that they wanted. We're basically saying we want to have the public fight but we're not going to twist arms to get you to vote no we want this to get across the finish line eventually just maybe by only a few votes not by a very large margin so it, it was just it was a very complicated kind of dance democratic leadership in the house was trying to play over the course of the last 15 16 hours as you guys know as well as anybody the Democratic caucus, particularly in the House, is extremely passionate about the issue, is extremely outraged about the fact that it hasn't been addressed yeah. yet. Leaders wanted the budget deal, but they knew they had to figure out some way, both politically and, and frankly on the policy side, to try and address concerns that weren't going to be addressed by Speaker Paul Ryan. So Nancy Pelosi's eight-hour speech in four-inch heels, yeah. all for naught, But really. what about the on the Senate side? Mitch McConnell said he's begun the process of starting to address immigration next week in the Senate. What are we expecting? Yeah, that's exactly right. And I, I think what Senator McConnell promised he was going to do, he is going to do. What he did at the end, right after they passed the budget bill, is he filed cloture to move on to an immigration bill. What's the immigration bill? It doesn't exist. What he did, guys, is basically just lay out a vehicle. And that means he has kept his promise. That means when Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said, look, whoever gets 60 votes on something is going to win, that's the truth. Basically, every member is going to have an opportunity to put up an amendment, try and whip the votes, and try and get it there. And if this some can get 60 votes on a bipartisan agreement, that's what's going to pass the Senate. I will note there's been a lot of behind the scenes work from members, bipartisan groups, conservative groups, more left wing groups on trying to figure out language to actually move that forward. It is going to be fascinating on the Senate floor next week. This is an actual debate on a very important national issue where we don't know the end game. That doesn't happen very often up here. And I will note, this isn't going to be quick. Expect it to be multiple weeks. Uh, it's going to be very interesting to watch. And frankly, I think probably good for the country to watch a debate that has been so kind of riled with heated talking points and bomb throwing at one another. This will be about the policy, and they have to prove that they can get it done. The sausage making has been yep. for all of us to see in yep. recent weeks. And the house is in recess. All these people streaming past Bill Mattingly are, 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 are going to go and try to like Happy catch... members yeah. ready to go home. <laughs> They're going to go sleep for an hour and a half and then come back. All, all right, right, Phil, catch, thank catch you. Catch a few of them on the way out. Capital Phil Mattingly you, all over at 4. And I know. Thank we you, call Phil. you Capital Phil behind your back. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and to your face, apparently. Uh, you know, I'll say that uh, the president does have to sign it yes. before you're officially here. Not going to have a government shutdown today. Let's bring in um, political economist Greg Vallier. He's been listening to all of this and watching all this drama overnight. He's the chief strategist for Horizon Investments. So is this the official ed end of the fiscal conservative 
you know, Paul Ryan wing of the Republican brand, party brand? And there are two things, I think, Christine. Number one is I fully agree with Phil that the dysfunction is over for a while. We've got a year or maybe longer without so these debilitating, good. humiliating, embarrassing budget fights. That's a good story. The, the second story that I think is very important for the markets is that deficits are headed significantly higher. I've been arguing for a while that if there's a problem with the economy, it could overheat with all the stimulus, tax cuts, more spending, tight labor market, synchronized global growth. So you're now in a situation where the bond market, which really began the stock market sell-off, the bond market is still worried about an economy that might get mm -hmm. too hot. So what you're saying is all the stimulus is at the wrong time for all the stimulus. Yeah, I mean, in 08, 09, we really needed a lot yeah. of stimulus during oh, but the... Those, but the Republicans didn't want to do that in 08 or 09. Now they yeah. want to do it. Well, I mean, now, <laughs> yeah, when the economy doesn't need it, it, we're getting all the stimulus, right. You've got the markets down, the Dow down 866 points or 3.5 percent since the tax cut legislation was signed into law. Not related, perhaps, but bad but optics. Maybe. No, but maybe uh, he's saying it, it probably is. Could be somewhat related. Paul Ryan, he is celebrating this victory for the yeah. GOP. Quote, he just tweeted, this is a great victory for our men and women in uniform. We ultimately reached a bipartisan compromise that fully funds our troops and gives our generals the certainty yep. they need to plan for the future. But let's take folks back. There's the Paul Ryan tweet. Let's take him back, Greg, to Rand Paul taking his stand. This was just a past 7 o'clock Eastern time when he laid out the problems for the Republican Party in the future. Listen. The reason I'm here tonight is to put people on the spot. I want people to feel uncomfortable. I want them to have to answer people at home who said, how come you were against President Obama's deficits, and then how come you're for Republican deficits? Isn't that the very definition of intellectual dishonesty? If you were against President Obama's deficits, and now you're for the Republican deficits, isn't that the very definition of hypocrisy?